I have a very, <laughs> I have a very basic lesson today. Um, but you know, sometimes it's really good to get way down and into the Christian fundamentals, right? So what it is that we believe, kind of a uh, an explanation uh, of our faith. Um, and, and I think that maybe it would be good also just to think of this as um, when we need to, it's on. <laughs> Get a little closer. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, when we need to share the uh, when we need to share the gospel with somebody, or when we need to tell somebody, uh, I talked a little bit about this in um, in Bible class uh, that it's hard to convey the basic tenets of Christianity because we have all this vast amount of information and doctrine and teaching that are in the Bible, but you can't just transfer that like you can't download it into someone else's brain and they have such a rudimentary understanding and probably you know if the media is any indication they have a wrong understanding of what Christianity is about um, and I, I think maybe sometimes it's good to uh, look at some of these real basic things and th just kind of think about them and for me that it's 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 helpful and I hope that it, it's helpful for you too um, I think that uh, the first thing I want to say is that Christians believe in creation, right? We believe in a creator. Uh, it all starts with the creation of the universe, the world and everything in it. Christians believe that God made the universe. Christians believe that everything came out of something. that that there has to be something that created the world, that something cannot come from nothing. Um, in our universe, we know that it's true that uh, something cannot come from nothing. And that, and, and that the, uh, the finite world and universe came into being from an eternal and everlasting God. And everything came into existence through God, an eternal and everlasting God. Uh, and if we look at John 1, 1 through 3, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning. All things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. So a little bit complicated the way it's written there, but basically saying that everything that exists in the world, all of our planet, the trees, the rocks, the people, the animals, everything in the world came into existence through an all-powerful creator. The universe itself, the universe which is finite, came from something that is infinite, from the infinite, from beginning comes, comes from the everlasting. And then if we look over at Acts 17 25 through 28 we looked at this actually this morning in class it says nor is he served by human hands as though he needed anything since he himself gives all people life and breath and all things and he made from one man every nation of mankind to live on the face of the earth having determined their appointed times and the boundaries of their habitation that they would seek God if perhaps they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and exist, as even some of your own poets have said, for we are his children. So God basically is holding us in the hollow of his hand. When we look at a uh, scripture that says, though he is not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and exist, that that God is all around us, and yet he is a person in and of himself. He is the spirit, and we are in the world, and that we join him in our spirit when we come to him. Um, that we have our existence, the, the reason and the, uh, our very existence, our reason for being is by the will of God. So when we think about that, that's a pretty amazing thing, that God wanted us to be created and thus we were created in his image so that that's that's essentially christians believe in creation that that creation came from an all-powerful god the originator of all things in the universe um 
Christians believe in creation and an infallible God who created all things. Infallible meaning perfect in morality and righteousness. Christians believe in, in truth. Christians believe in absolute moral truth. Now think about your conscience. Where did you get your conscience from? Where, where did it come from? Why do you know that there is right and wrong? Why, why is there a right and a wrong? Why is it that we are um, upset when we see evil in the world? And why is it that our heart is warm when we see a mother holding her child? Why do we inherently know that it is moral to help the vulnerable and to protect the weak? Why do we know it is inherently wrong to hate and steal and kill and oppress? We believe these things in our heart of hearts because we know that there is absolute good. And absolute goodness does not make sense unless there is an absolute God who is perfect and sets the standard for all things which are good. Uh, without God, there is only opinion. There is only consensus. And that is called relative morality. And if we believe in relative morality, it, is, uh, it must be valid that we accept murder and stealing and oppression as moral if a person believes that it is moral. Without a supreme authority of rightness and righteousness, there is no authority for what is good at all. So Christians believe in absolute morality. And the Bible explains that inherent morality exists in all of us, that it was placed on our hearts by God. It says in Romans 2, 14 and 15, it says, for when Gentiles who do not have the law do instinctively the things of the law, these not having a law are a law to themselves, and that they show the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience bearing witness, and their thought, thoughts alternately accusing or else defending them. So we believe in absolute righteousness or absolute truth. Um, Christians believe in a creator of the universe. That creator is made in the image of God, and that that goodness and that perfect righteous God has put that morality on our hearts because we're made in his image and that we have free will. All right. That we are able to choose right from wrong. Like it says in Matthew 6:24, it says, "No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth." Christians believe that we all have a choice, that we can choose to reject God, that all of us have, in fact, chosen in our lives to reject God, and that this evil uh, that has corrupted the world and subjected it to futility, that this futility is known as sin and death, and that it is the result, of, it results in pain and suffering and cataclysm and despair. And it says in, Matt, in uh, Romans 5, 12, it says, therefore justice through, through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sin. So men can choose good and evil. All of us have chosen evil. Uh, at one point in our lives, we've all done the wrong thing at some point. This is the natural state which every person on earth finds themselves in a state of corruption, death, and despair, and that everyone is equal in their condemnation and in their sin because everyone in their lives has done wrong and has chosen good, has chosen evil over good. That nobody is superior or better than anyone else, and I think that that is a common misconception of people in the world is that they think that Christians think that they're better than everyone else. But yet, a true Christian does not boast in the good things that they have done, but they boast in the Lord, and they boast in uh, how God has given them the opportunity to do such good things. We believe that, um, in a spiritual sense. If you think about this in a spiritual sense, maybe not literally, that we are all wandering in a desert. We're all parched and dying of thirst. And a Christian has, uh, 
has followed a road that they found in the middle of the desert, obscured by sand and wind, but nevertheless a very straight road. Um, and that road led them to an oasis. That's what a Christian has done. And that, that, wa in, that, in, the, in, that <laughs> in that oasis is water to drink and food to eat, to sustain and strengthen them. Not because they did anything, but because they followed the road. And it is every Christian's responsibility to seek others and tell them where the road is and help them along the way. And Christians believe, in essence, that uh, the road was put there by God, that the road is Christ and the oasis is eternal life. It says in John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the road, the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. When we sinned and became lost, we became separated from God. God, though, did not want us to remain lost in the desert. Therefore, he supplied that road, who is Jesus Christ, to take us out of our de desperation and out of the desert and into the oasis. In straight terms, we know that for every decision, that there is a consequence for that decision. And if someone robs their parents' home, for instance, and I would actually see this pretty often in my last job uh, as a, an investigator that um, somebody would let their kids move into their house and then the, uh, the kids would, would steal from their parents or they would clean out their uh, medicine cabinet and the parents would have to call the police because they didn't have a choice. Um, you know, and then they'd find all their parents' things at the pawn shops and things of that nature but it's because of the, the drug addiction, because of the, the people get sucked into the sin. So the, the consequences is that it hurts their parents and that you know if you're caught, it could result in jail or prison. There's definitely a fallout to the decisions that we make. In the same way our decision to commit a sin uh, has a consequence of enslavement to that sin. The reason why is sinning goes against the perfect nature, the absolute righteousness and goodness of God. It is rejecting God out of a selfish desire for our own wants. And, uh, you know, going back to the example about the parents, when we think about additional consequences, we understand, and I would see this too, is that people would be on probation for literally years and years and years and years so they it's different um, kind of probation because they get sentenced to probation where they had to report where they were living and that kind of thing but then after that that intense probation was over they had a long-lasting probation because they were supposed to pay restitution back and as long as they owed money they would continue to be on probation forever and ever and ever never able to get out from under it and as a matter of fact, when we, when we had a conviction for fraud that was in the tens of thousands of dollars and people paid $20 a month, you can imagine how long that person would be on probation. A long, long time. And it's the same thing for us when we sin. We're in perpetual probation. But the problem is that the amount that we pay back God every month is exactly zero dollars and zero cents because we have no ability to pay that. With God, we need to pay restitution for our sins against him. The only problem is that we are unable to pay it because the restitution that is required is life itself. And not only our life, but a perfect life, a perfect life that is free from sin. Innocent blood is demanded for tainted blood. And uh, we cannot provide that, but guess what? God. God can provide that. That perfect life that paid for sin is none other than the sacrifice of God's own perfect son, Jesus Christ. And why is that? It's because he loves us, of course. And if we look at Romans 5, 6 through 9, it says, For while we were still helpless, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died 
for us. He paid our restitution. Much more than having been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. It's a wonderful, vo a wonderful verse. We really think about it that, yes, we owe this restitution and we should be on probation forever with no way to pay it back. But God loves us. He loves us so much that he sacrificed his own son because he was the only one that could do it. And God knew that. So how do I come to God knowing that he sent his son to die for me, to redeem me from my sin, to pay my restitution and pay my debt? The same question was posed to the Apostle Peter by men who realized that they had murdered Jesus Christ out of hatred and envy. And this is what Peter told them, Acts 2:37 through 39. It says, now when they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and they said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, repent, and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises for you and for your children and for all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call to himself. So today, we can choose to come to God through faith in Jesus Christ and repentance and confession and through baptism and that um, in baptism into, into Christ. So all these things are basically what it means to be a Christian. This is the basic idea of what Christianity is all about. That God is a creator that he made us, that he is absolutely perfect and moral, that we have free will, and that all of us have chosen wrongly with our free will and used it badly, and that we've sinned against God, that we needed someone to save us and deliver us from that sin, and that deliverer is Jesus Christ, and that if we repent and are baptized into the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of our sins, that we will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, and forgiveness of sin. And that that promise is not only for these people 2,000 years ago, but for their children and for everyone who is far off, as many as the Lord God will call to himself. If there's anything uh, that you need to say or do today, or anything in your heart you need to come forward for any reason, please feel free to do that as we stand and sing our closing song.